and welcome to another episode of, yep, you guessed it, The Shirtless Painter. Anyone can paint and anyone can paint anything, including my special guest, my good friend and fellow artist, Moby. Well, there are two things that are sort of incorrect with what you just said. Please, yeah, let, let's Shirtless break it down. Shirtless painters. Welcome to The Shirtless Painters. And the other is, I have a feeling we have the potential to be friends, but we've just met. So you said right. my good friend. My new acquaintance who I just met a few minutes ago. And potentially good friend. And potentially good friend by the end of this, fingers crossed, Moby. Hi. Hi. There's a lot of problems in the world. A lot of people disagree on a lot of things, but I think there's one thing we can all agree on, and that is that blacklight posters are cool. So today we're gonna paint our own blacklight posters because honestly, I can't afford the high prices of some of these store-bought ones. So let's jump right in. Okay. No blacklight poster is in my mind is complete without some sort of trippy alien. I'm gonna just go ahead and get a trippy alien going here. Okay, you know, I actually was planning on painting aliens as well, so thank you for stealing my idea. You're welcome. Did you ever own a blacklight poster? And if so, oh, what kind? Yes, as a matter of fact I did, and it scared me. It would have been, because I'm old. How old are you? It's never been discussed on the show, but I'm somewhere between 20 and 50. That's, okay, well, I'm older say. than your age range. I'm 52. Okay. So in junior high school, before I became a punk rock kid, I really wanted to fit in with the cool kids. And so I started smoking pot with them. Well, I started stealing drugs from my mom and giving it to the cool kids okay. as a way to endear myself to the cool kids. But I also listen to the music that they like, which I've since come to really love, but at the time that was like Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, and I was 12, 13 years old, and if I'm being honest, like Black Sabbath and Led Zeppelin scared me. If you're just hearing that music for the first time, it sounds like something that like a Twisted Wizard would, would yeah. listen to, so I can By only way, imagine. By the way, Twisted Wizard is not the name of a band, it should be It should be, right Twisted now. Wizard, guys, let's look into if that's taken, because we should, we should at least squat on that, uh, on that name, get the website or something. Okay, so I tried to like that scary music, which, to be very clear, I have since come to love, but at the sure. time it scared me. And right, so you're just my, a boy. My first and only blacklight painting was, do you know, it's from Led Zeppelin 4, it's the guy holding the lantern, what? Twisted Wizard holding the lantern, and I had a black light bulb. I didn't have a black light. I think I might have gone to the hardware store to get a black light bulb, but that made it even scarier. Yeah, black light posters are, you know, the effect on their own is, is pretty scary or, you know, exhilarating, depending. And, you know, once you flip on that black light, all bets are off. So that was my black light poster, and then, I heard the clash on the radio and stopped trying to fit in with the cool kids and became a weird, depressed punk rock kid. As we all do. Yeah, Joe Strummer, um, he didn't have time for black lights. He was too busy of a too busy of a guy. I've got a lot of Joe Strummer stories. What's he like? Well, he's, de he's dead now. He's dead. Okay, we know that. He's since um, passed. It's one of the weirdest things about being a sort of public figure musician is you get to meet and work with your heroes. Sure. So like, and this is like, I'm just gonna name drop, if that's okay. Please, yeah, so we like, encourage name dropping so on the show. So I went on tour with David Bowie and- Heard of him. I sang a Joy Division song with Joy Division. And now you're here with played me. Played jazz versions of Sex Pistols songs with Steve Jones. Wow. But Joe Strummer, so I met him the second or third time I played Glastonbury which is a huge festival in England. And my percussionist was friends with him. And I went there and I was like, you're Joe Strummer, like you started The Clash with Mick Jones and Paul Simon and, mm -hmm. and Topper Hedden, I think that was the drummer's name. Yeah. And I assume when I'm meeting my heroes is that they're gonna act like royalty. Because in my mind, they were. So I met Joe and he was just this happy, ebullient, gregarious drunk. Good for him, he's earned it. You know what, yeah. if anyone has earned the right to be drunk, it's Joe Strummer. Someone brought me to like some after hours event there and like walked me through the kitchen. I was very drunk and very high to this disco. I think it's called Smoke and Mirrors. And I walked in and Joe was there and the DJ was playing a Donna Summer song 
and we saw, Joe and I saw each other and we yelled like, Joe, Moby, and we hugged and we fell down on the floor and we're rolling around and we danced to this Donna Summer wow. song and told each other that we loved each other. And that was the last time I saw him. Wow, well I think that's a pretty beautiful uh, final memory of old, yeah. of old Joe. If you meet your heroes, it's a crapshoot. Like I was at a party recently and Neil Young was there. Oh, and please, please tell me this. And someone said, oh, do you want to meet Neil Young? And I was like, of course I do, because I love Neil Young. Sure. But then I thought, what if I get him on a bad day? Like, what if he's a dick? And then I lose 20 of my favorite songs of all time for one five second meeting. Did you opt to not? So to I, I said, no, I'd, I'd, rather, I'd rather go home and listen to After the Gold Rush That's, then get a handshake. I think in your case that might be smart because it's, it's, it sounds like you've had an, enough um, positive experiences that you're just, you're just begging for a, a Yeah. For well, the there, have been some, there have been some either negative ones or just challenging ones, a.k.a. or i.e. Bill Clinton. I loved him as president, but I saw him speak once and he relitigated his Whitewater case for 30 minutes, and he was mm. so angry and so bitter that people were just walking out. Oh, and I was like, boy, Bill, Bill. I loved you, Bill. Jeez, Louise. Bill, you're still welcome on the show, but come on, don't relitigate. And you were a great this president. Is old, this is ancient history. Yeah. Don't try and relitigate at this stage. Squatting down is tricky because I'm like, don't want to look fat. That's okay. This is a body positive show. You say that, but it's not really. Like you say that there as like go. like a really thin, healthy, in shape person. So it's like, it's like a hair model to say like, oh, any like it's okay that you're bald. It's like you're a hair model. Well, yeah. well people have uh, people have sounded off with all sorts of takes on my body in the in the comments section. Lots of creative um, criticisms that you know, I never even thought of before. Uh, I learned something a long time ago. Don't pay attention to comments, especially now that we know that like the really negative ones are people who are being paid by Russia. Yeah. Like so now when someone if someone comments something really egregious, I just yeah. say like I'm so happy for you that you have a steady job working for Putin in the FSB. Right. Yeah. How's the weather in Russia? Send. Yeah. That will um, shut them up. When I learned not to look at comments or take them seriously was when someone commented on something. This was a long time ago and they said that they were going to find me stab me and watch me bleed to death on the street. And I suddenly realized, like, why would I hand my emotional well-being right. over to a complete stranger who might or might not be real, but if they're real, are a belligerent sociopath. That's a great point. We, I feel like we, we fostered a nice community within the shirtless painter com you know, uh, community. Not to use the word community twice, but uh, <laughs> there, you know, there are some bad apples in there, and we see you guys, and you need to cut it out or go back to Russia. Yeah. Or if you're in Russia, come here and you know paint with us, but stop the negativity for once. Well, it's it's sort of that question like, what do you want to remember on your deathbed? Right. And do you want to remember spending time with friends and family and trying to make the world a better place and doing interesting creative things, or going online? and criticizing people you've never met. Right, getting a really good zinger in at, you know, Kylie Minogue or something. Yeah. Not that not that I have anything against. I mean, the subtext of negative her, trolling comments, apart from being like an employee of the FSB, is that like the moment someone posts something really trolly, they're basically announcing to the world that they hate themselves. Sort of a rubber glue situation, ultimately. Rubber glue. Not to be confused with rubber cement, but more rubber, I'm rubber, you yeah. glue. We um, all know the rest. Just to bring you up to speed on what I'm painting here, I'm just sort of trying, I'm treating my blacklight poster as sort of just like a get together for all the staples of a blacklight poster. So you got our sort of trippy eyeball, a little alien. I'm painting a peace sign now, but I'm giving the pe him or her a sort of sorcerer's apprentice, Mickey Mouse wizard. Um, outfit because we were talking about wizards just a minute ago. Hmm. I think I screwed up a little bit. Oh no, I didn't. I can use the trowel. See, that's a great attitude. I like to say on this program there are no screw-ups, only pleasant whoopsies. And Yeah, I feel like Bob Ross right now where it's like someone watching and be like, oh, he ruined his painting. I was like, or did I? Hmm. I've never heard of him. So one thing I wanted to talk about is 
a vegan festival that I helped organize. Now, would this be the Circle V? Circle V festival? Um, so, and I'm going to give a little bit of a shameless plug. It's November 18th Please. in downtown Los Angeles, and all the profits go to benefit Mercy for Animals. It's a farm animal welfare group. And tons of people like Reggie Watts is performing, uh, Davey from AFI, they have a band called Dream Car, tons of speakers, different food trucks. So November 18th, you spend money to go to a festival and all the good money goes to Mercy for Animals. So by the way, what do you do when you're not hosting shirtless painters? Uh, I usually just kind of go to sleep. I live here <laughs> in the studio and I, I paint mm -hmm. all day. I'll, I'll paint, you know, I'll paint by myself. Um, but, you know, when I'm not painting, um, it, this is, there's no windows in this, in this room. Um, and I do live here, so it's kind of just, I just sort of naturally fall asleep over in the corner there. And then I have plenty, then I sleep 14 hours or so and I'm rested oh. to start doing it again. So you're like a, a sloth without any negative connotation. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm proud, I'm a proud sloth. We're also sloth positive on this show, so any sloths watching, we, you know, we you know, honor you. And How works. much do you know about sloth trivia? You know, I don't know too much. I know they're sleepy and three-toed, but... Sometimes they move less than 18 inches a day. Wow, that's and the one life, of the, And there are two reasons why there are a lot of sloths in the world. Um, one is that because they don't move around much, hunters don't see them. Oh, perfect. Two... Because they don't move around much, they get moldy. Wow. So when they're in the can when you're in the jungle and you look up, the sloth has mold camouflage. And you probably don't taste too great either if you're yep. covered in mold. And the third is their crazy claws hook into the branch. So even if someone shoots them, the claws keep them attached to the branch. So I think in the rainforest, people know just don't don't kill bother the with sloths. That's a great you know I admire that. That makes me like sloths even more. And I already liked them you know pretty well. Tell me about this character that I'm seeing here, because I've seen him or her before. Okay. Um, gender neutral. Okay. Years ago, in 1984, I dropped out of college. I had been a philosophy major, but then I started having crippling panic attacks, so I had to drop out of school. And I moved home, and I was sleeping on my mom's couch, and I was broke and anxious, and I got a job at my local record store slash head shop called Johnny's in Darien, Connecticut. And... I started working there and every single bag that left Johnny's had to have a drawing on it. Mm. And up until this point, I'd sort of left visual art to my family. You know, my mom sure. a painter, my uncle a sculptor, my other uncle was a photographer for the New York Times, my grandmother was a painter. So like I did music, they did visual arts. But then I started working at this record store and so I started drawing him and then her, it, gender Thank neutral. You. So, then, when I started making records, I would go out into the world, and oddly enough, every now and then someone would want an autograph. And I felt really cheap and crappy right. just going like, blah, blah, blah. And so I started drawing this guy, girl, it, and I started using it in videos and putting it on t-shirts. And so he, she, it has taken on a life of their own and it helps because it's the only thing I know how to draw. Hmm. And do they have a name or any kind of, have, has there been any kind of backstory or um, there, well, anything developed over the years? The name is Little Idiot. It's just sort of a... Oh, Moby. Well, because I'm little oh. and I'm not very smart. so it's not. Oh, so this represents you. This is sort of a stand-in for you? Yeah, an avatar almost. An avatar. It's not just a film. Yeah, so that's the Little Idiot. I encourage everyone at home to take a page from Moby's book and use this as an opportunity to think of your avatar. I mean, what, you know, think of a fun little character, you know? You could send him or her or it on adventures or, you know, sign your checks with this character, it's, you know. Just send it in lieu of money on your tax return? Sure, yeah, the government will appreciate it. Yeah. And if they don't, screw them, I, you know, I'm not big on taxes. If you have jury duty, just send it. Yeah, send a little hand, you know, a little hand-drawn doodle and then they'll understand. I'm officially endorsing that uh, move. I had an ex-girlfriend, this was pre-sobriety, and she worked at a marijuana dispensary. And before I got sober, I loved alcohol and drugs. Marijuana, aka pot, aka, AKA ganja, aka jazz, grass. Jazz cigarettes. Jazz cigarettes. Um, jazz weed. You know, it's the 
only drug I've ever done that I didn't like. Now, here's a question. Were, were there any black light posters around when you did it? Yes. Mm. I would go to, like, the, my friends had older brothers listening to Black Sabbath and Led Zeppelin, and they would have, like, bongs and shag carpeting and black light posters, mm -hmm. and I pretended I was okay with it. Sure. And the truth is I was terrified, aka the story of my entire life up until this point. Well, speaking of drug, just adding a little uh, mushroom here, just because it feels like that's... It looks a little bit more like a lotus root from a Chinese restaurant, but... That, and you know what? That's not, actually what it is. It's like a pacifier for a baby, but it's a psilocybin mushroom. Right. See, that's the suck end, and that's sort of the decorative outside, and then the baby has a fun little, you know... There are anthropologists and ethnobotanists who believe that um, mushrooms and organic psychedelics are what sort of, like gave us that 2001 obelisk conscious consciousness moment. Hmm. Like that before that, we were scared apes, and then we had psychedelic drugs, and it, our prefrontal cortex just expanded. Just opened right up. Yep. I got to say, even though I'm sober, as I age, I could make exceptions for some organic psychedelics because yeah. they're pretty special. It's just like stuff that you put on a salad. It's grown out of the earth. It is, if you think about it, like the first time I did mushrooms, it was so odd. I was like, okay, and think about the logic of this. There's a plant, a little mushroom, about the size of my pinky, and if it's growing, I can stand an inch away from it, and I'm not breaking any laws. I can put my finger on it, and I'm not breaking any Still laws. Still clean. The moment I pluck it, I've suddenly committed a felony. You're in possession at that point. But then point. if I put it in my mouth, I haven't broken any laws. It's a very interesting web we weave. I'm just going to add a little bit of um, glowing sort of highlights to your circle V here, just so everyone can really remember that it's coming up. There's one thing I always like to add, and that is my wife. So I'm going to go ahead and add my wife here. Oh, you have a wife? I do have a wife, though she sort of is a shapeshifter. She she's takes... a, a human wife? Today she's, she's going to be a skull, a, gr a glowing skull. I have crippling attachment issues, so I can't even have relationships. But thanks for asking. No, anytime. All right, so I'm just adding my wife's sort of skull here. Add the lower jaw. And she's sort of a happy skull, of course. Happy to be involved in such good company. What's your wife's name? Darden. Not Alistair? Nope, just Darden. Speaking of Alistair Crowley, so he was part of sort of a Gnostic quasi-Satanist movement. He was okay. a British writer, um, and he inspired a lot of 20th century Gnosticism and quasi-Satanism. The reason I mention him is because he had a huge role to play in a weird way, tangentially, with the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in mm. Los Angeles. So, Alistair, you dog you. The man who started the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and I feel a little bit like postmodern Rain Man right now, but um, was this guy Jack Parsons. And Jack Parsons was an early 20th century rocket scientist, and his rocket technology helped the Allies win World War II. And he helped NASA set up the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena. But when he wasn't doing that, he was also an Aleister Crowley devotee um, and practiced uh, Gnostic sex magic. Wow, sex magic. Yep. And, going even deeper, um, one of his early acolytes was L. Ron Hubbard. And L. Mm -hmm. Ron Hubbard was kicked out of Jack Parsons' Aleister Crowley worshipping sex magic cult because he was too unhinged. So he had to start his own. So then, yeah, he was like, yeah, like, you guys, I don't need your stupid Alistair Crowley sex magic cult. I'll go start my own. But you know he was bummed. You know, I mean, it oh, never, yeah. it never, take it from me, it never feels good to be kicked out of a sex cult, a yeah. sex magic cult. Um, and then it Jack stings. Parsons exploded. Really? Fa literally, not figuratively, not like in a sort of like, oh, he my shit's up. exploding and blowing up and buy my records. It's right. more like he actually literally exploded. Wow. And no one knows if it's because he was experimenting with jet fuel or spontaneous combustion for like involving alchemical elements. Wow. Yeah. Now I didn't want to copy you by doing um, stars, but I did want to do a bunch of little tiny um, glowing things because I think it'll look cool. So I did a bunch of question marks as though maybe the Riddler kind of came in and did a pass at this painting. Moby, whenever, when you're like in your office or, or working and you throw a wadded up um, 
piece of paper across the room into the waste paper basket? Do you ever kind of go, Moby? You know, like how people say Kobe. Kobe's a sports person, right? He's a sports man. Um, he, and people sometimes go, Kobe. But I think it could be kind of a fun opportunity for you to say Moby when you I would that. rather say Kobe because my friend Wiley has this amazing old chihuahua named Kobe oh, okay. who wears like an L.A. Lakers jersey and is just one of my favorite creatures on the planet. So I would say Kobe. But it would be understood that you're talking about a small elderly dog. I'm going to do something really terrible. I'm going to ruin my painting. Okay. I'm excited. Okay, so I'm gonna, I gotta ruin my painting quick. Okay. I am become death. Yeah. That was said by well, an inventor to quote of um, Robert Oppenheimer. He did an interview after he invented the new. Well, one of the people who helped with the Manhattan Project to mm -hmm. invent the nuclear bomb. And there's this, it's the greatest thing on the internet, on the YouTubes. It's an interview with him, and he's sort of looking below the camera, and he says, some of us wept, some of us prayed. And he said, and I thought of the verse from the Bhagavad Gita where Vishnu reveals his multi-armed form to someone and says, I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. Hmm. I don't really know anything about the Bhagavad Gita except from that Robert Oppenheimer quote. It sounds pretty fun. I mean, I would check it out. <laughs> okay, while you're doing that, I'm just gonna take the opportunity to sort of add, add a little rainbow here, and I'm gonna kind of okay, do it. we're going in very different directions. I'm gonna add it all in one swoop. Okay, while you're doing that, I'm just gonna do a little touch up. There, done. Great. Well, I think we got a couple of great looking blacklight paintings on our hands, but a blacklight poster is only as good as how it stands up to a blacklight. So what do you say we, uh, what do we say we get to it? And yeah, how about, how but do we want to have sound effects when the blacklight goes on? Oh, definitely. Okay, We're so going to have tons of sound effects. Yeah. Oh, we, we should do them. Okay, cool. Yeah. Sort of maybe psychedelic, uh, trippy yeah. sound effects. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and... I'm surprisingly pleased with my painting. Yeah, I don't mean to toot our um, own horns here, but I will say these things look sick as f Yeah, like, like yours just screams 1973 head shop. Mine just screams someone with attachment issues who spends way too much time by himself. Well, Moby, I just want to thank you so much for, for stopping by and sharing this trippy experience with me today. It was a pleasure. Well, check that out. Peace, man. Uh, it was a pleasure painting with you and chatting with you. Um, and to all of you at home, if you would like to see more of Moby and experience some other cool people and things, listen to the Blacklight poster and check out the Circle V event, which is coming up in November. November 18th in downtown Los Angeles. Thanks for joining us today on The Shirtless Painter. I encourage you to get out there, create your own avatar, use it to sign your checks, and you know, if you want to send it in lieu of money to the IRS, then go ahead and do it. We'll see you next time.